is dropshipping still profitable in 2024? The answer is yes, of course it is. You're welcome. Hope you got value. As usual, leave a like, click subscribe, share this video with a friend for more mind-blowing content just like this. Now guys, obviously that is a bit of a joke. Yes, dropshipping is profitable, but I'm assuming if you clicked on this video, seeing it's longer than 10 seconds, you probably wanna know some more information, which is definitely a good thing. If you know anything about me or my company, Dropship Lifestyle, you know we put a ton of time into research before we even consider building a new store, and that is because there are ways to do dropshipping right, aka profitably, and there are ways to do it wrong. So what I actually wanna do in this video is take you through a few different things that we look for every time we build a new store to ensure that yes, it can be profitable even in 2024. So the goal of this is to point you in the right direction. This will not be a complete masterclass, but it will be the essentials that you need to know if you are even thinking about dropshipping in 2024. So the first thing we want to talk about where it all begins is the products, right? What are we going to sell? Now, when you are picking a product type to sell with profitability in mind, the first thing I just want you to even consider is what price range products do you wanna sell? Because of course, this is your business, you can choose whatever you want. And on the very low end, let's say you could choose to sell products for $1. On the very high end, let's say you can choose products to sell for $50,000. Now, can you build a store and get sales on both of them? The answer is yes, of course you can. There are plenty of people that do both. Now, in my opinion, there is a sweet spot when it comes to drop shipping if you wanna do it profitably. And no, it is not on the low end, which again, you probably know if you watched any of my stuff, and on the higher end, yes, you can do this, but that is a much different business than the types of businesses that I like to build. Because again, my company is called Dropship Lifestyle for a reason. If you build a business selling products you know, that are tens of thousands of dollars, again, yes, people are buying things like this online. Yes, you could sell them, but it's a different business than where I like to be. I like to live somewhere right around this range, selling products with an average order value of about one to call it $5,000. These are products that we can sell that appeal to the upper middle class. Of course, there's more criteria that goes into this, but these are products that everyday people are buying online and comfortably buying. They're also products that don't require a lot of pre-sale and post-sale support. And most importantly, if you wanna drop ship profitably, is that these are products that can leave you with a real margin after a sale is made. Now, in my opinion, the goal with dropshipping should be to have about a 30% net profit margin, okay? So obviously you hear about sales all the time, sales are great, revenue's great, but what we care about is profit, what is left over at the end of the day. So let me break down kind of what an order can look like with the expenses that go with it. Again, what we're looking for when we want to dropship profitably. So let's just say hypothetically, right now there's a standing desk under the camera over there. And let's say we were going to sell that. And let's say from supplier ABC for product number one, two, three, they were ter terrible at naming, the map price was $1,500. Now, what is map? We'll cover that in a few minutes, but just know that is the lowest price that we can advertise the product for, minimum advertised price. And it's the lowest price that any of our competitors can advertise the product for. So this is what our sale price would be to our customers. Now that's what we sell it for, okay, great. But again, that is top line, that is what comes in. What we have to do is figure out how can we sell products like this and again, do it profitably. And we wanna make it so we can have that 30% net margin. So the first expense and the biggest expense that you'll have when drop shipping after a sale is made is for the cost of goods sold, right? COGS, C-O-G-S. Now, with our method of dropshipping, we like to sell for brands, again, that have minimum advertised price and that have a markup from wholesale to map of at least 2X. So for us, worst case scenario we wanna see with products in this price range would be a cost of goods sold of $750. 
Again, cost of goods sold. That's what we would pay the supplier after we sold the product. And also, I'm just gonna mention this now. If you wanna drop ship profitably, you're not working with middlemen suppliers. You're not trying to find cheaper products on Amazon or eBay and then sell them on Shopify. No, you're going direct to the source and you're becoming an authorized retailer to sell for that brand, just like Target does for almost all the products in their store, just like Best Buy does for all the products in there. We're not selling for the same brands, but we're becoming authorized retailers just like they do. Okay. So that is our first expense. What is the next expense? Well, we offer free shipping on our stores because that is industry standard and it has been since I got into this business 15 years ago. And let's just say to make math easy, we'll do a round number that our shipping cost for the product was $150. Again, that we are covering. Well, now our expenses are currently at 900. We sold a product for 1500 and we have 600 left over. And yes, you'll have your merchant fees in there, you know, an extra 2.9% you would take out of your sale price. So I know there are little other odds and ends fees there, but what I wanna show you, what we're gonna get to is how they really become insignificant once you start selling even one product. But for now, we have 600. And then the next question that people will ask is, okay, well, that sounds great. I wanna make $600. How do I actually get this sale? Well, we use paid traffic. I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit as well, but we send ads to these products. So we also have the expense of ads. Now, for a product that is $1,500, I would be willing to spend up to $150 to acquire that sale. Because what I look at, my bottom line, the lowest I wanna go for my return on ad spend, I'll just put this up here. ROAS, ROAS stands for return on ad spend. The lowest I want to see is 10X. What that means is for every $1 that I give, let's say Google for ads, I want to see $10 back in sales. Now, some days are gonna be much higher, some days might be lower, but that's what I wanna see as an average at a bare minimum. So what does that mean for this product at $150, uh, sorry, $1,500 being sold for, I would spend up to $150 in ads to get that sale. And what would that leave us with? $450 in net profit, which is also 30% of the sale price. So this is how you drop ship profitably, right? This is step one. You need great products if you're going to drop ship profitably. And in my opinion, one of the biggest things to look at at a starting point, again, there's a lot more that goes into this, but at a starting point is being in this sweet spot in terms of pricing. So you can sell things that don't require a ton of pre-sale and post-sale support. And so they, you're not selling a product for 50 bucks and then have a $5 budget in terms of ads to try to get somebody to buy it. That's just ridiculous, okay? You don't wanna do that. You wanna have margins built in. So that's kind of step one of the process, right? Of drop shipping profitably in 2024. But now let's go to what would be the, the next step, right? Because to drop ship profitably, now you understand we need great products, but we also need great suppliers, okay? So I kind of uh, alluded to this earlier, but when it comes to the suppliers that we work with at Dropship Lifestyle and the brands that we sell for, I use the terms suppliers and brands interchangeably. These are not brands that we find by doing a Google search for stand-up desk drop shipping or stand-up desk drop ship suppliers. Those suppliers are middlemen. You're not gonna make money with them. Instead, we want to become, I'm just gonna write this and I'll put AR for authorized retailer for the best brands in our industry, whatever industry that is that we choose in step one when we're doing product research that, uh, that basically are drop ship friendly. By dropship friendly, I mean we could find these brands already being sold on other online stores stores that I would call our future competitors. Now, when it comes to doing supplier research and making sure we're not just drop shipping, but we're drop shipping profitably, I, when doing my research, put suppliers into one of three tiers. So we have bronze, we have silver, and we have gold suppliers. This isn't like something you'll find online. This is kind of like an internal naming convention that I've used, I don't know, for a decade plus. But they're all very real and they're all very different. Now, bronze suppliers are the ones that you're gonna find when you do those searches, you know, dropship supplier, stand-up desk, dropship supplier, rugs. These are suppliers that are also easily identifiable because when you find their websites, they are going to try to charge you for access. So I'm gonna put charge for access. If you're doing supplier research and you ever find a store that says, 
you know, click here to become a retailer or a dealer, and then you get to a page that says, give us X amount of dollars a month or X amount of dollars per year. They are a bronze supplier and you want to forget about them just as fast as you found them. You do not want to sell for them because the margins simply don't exist. The companies that we want to sell for actually make money by partnering with retailers like us. We're online retailers, but again, we are still retailers. This is still a real business. Now, these suppliers, again, you simply just won't do business with. But another way to identify bronze suppliers is Google the brand names that you find on your future competitor stores and look for their reviews, okay? So if you start seeing consistent patterns of negative reviews for certain brands in your niche, these are, again, what I call bronze suppliers. These are companies that really don't care enough about their business. That's why they have to make money by charging people for access. And these are brands that even if you get excited to be able to sell their products over a long enough time horizon, you're gonna get bad reviews too, you're gonna get returns, you're gonna get refunds, you're gonna lose money, and you're gonna be paying them for access for products that basically aren't the quality you would want and that don't have healthy margins built in like we talked about a bit earlier, okay? So bronze suppliers, don't work with them. The suppliers that we wanna work with are silver and gold, and just so you know, whatever niche you choose, most likely 90% plus of the brands that you sell for are going to be what I consider silver suppliers. Now, an easy way to identify silver suppliers, besides the fact that they don't charge for access and have tons of bad reviews, is that they have these minimum advertised price policies. Now, that's great, because again, like we talked about, you need to have those margins kind of built in from the start so that you can drop ship profitably. Now, the third tier, this is something that might take you longer to get to, because one, there's less of them, and two, they're more selective with who they authorize to sell their products, are gold. Now, gold obviously enforce minimum advertised price policies, but they also send us orders. So if you were ever like looking at, I don't know, some random product that you were looking to purchase online, and you found a website name for the brand that you like, and you saw a link on their website that says something like where to buy, and then you click that link and it shows you different websites you can go to, that is a gold supplier. Gold suppliers will literally send traffic to us. They will refer leads and orders to us. And if you're wondering like, well, why don't these gold suppliers just take those sales themselves? Or why don't these silver suppliers just sell direct to the public? And the short answer is that is not their business. These companies, again, the good, there's companies that do both, but the companies that we want to sell for, silver and gold, their focus is on making excellent products in whatever industry or niche that they are in. Their business is not, let's build an e-commerce store and figure out traffic and conversions and you know customer support on that side. No, their business is make great products. And then our business of being a retailer is completely different. They profit by making great products. And again, partnering with companies like ours and possibly yours, if you already do this, or if you're considering doing this, to bring them sales. It is a mutually beneficial relationship, which is why any legitimate supplier will never charge you for access. Now, listen, if you want to know more like about all of this and everything, I do have a free training that's like two hours long where I go deep into how to find these and show examples with screen shares. You can find that at dropshipwebinar.com. I'll also put a link in the description of this video if you're interested. Highly recommend you check it out. Again, it's totally free, dropshipwebinar.com. But at this point, just know, again, if you wanna dropship profitably, what are the first two things? We need great products, we need great suppliers. The next thing that we need is a great store, okay? Now, our stores we build on Shopify. If you're not familiar with Shopify, they are the biggest e-commerce platform out there. They're the best, they have been for a long time, and they continue to get better. Um, if you, By the way, if you don't have Shopify and you wanna just try it, we have a special link where they will give you three days for free, and then your first three months for only $1 a month. Um, I'll link that too in the description, but it's DS life slash Shopify. And if you sign up there, again, three days free, then your first three months for $1 a month, no contracts or commitments or anything. And um, that's a deal we have because I'm a, I'm a commerce coach with them. Like, uh, they, they obviously recognize that our students do well. We were voted best e-commerce course. They gave us a special page on their site. Just know if you sign up there, we do get a referral, but you also get three months for $3. So it's a win-win. Um, okay, but we use Shopify now. In this video, I'm not gonna go deep into you know, how we build stores, but what I will do is post a link, again, in the description that goes into a brand new video I just posted on YouTube. It's over an hour long, and it shows you how we build stores. So that'll give you a good idea of what a quality store will look like. I've done, over the years, I don't know, maybe 
five to 10 different store reviews here on YouTube where I ask people, do you want me to review a Shopify store, post a link to it, and I can't tell you how many of the same common mistakes I see over and over again, but these are stores that simply, not ours, the stores that people submit that I just know will have very low conversion rates. What does that mean, right? Why do you wanna build a great store like I'll show you how to do in that link below to that YouTube video? It's because the next thing we're gonna get to is traffic. And what we're really trying to do with traffic is get our conversion rate as high as possible. What is a conversion rate? It is the percent of people that buy versus how many people visit your store, basically. So sales to traffic. So let's just say, hypothetically, you decide to build a store and you want to drop ship profitably in 2024. And a month from now, you have everything configured and set up with suppliers and products. And you are getting 100 unique website visitors per day, okay? So 100 website visitors per day are going to your store. Your conversion rate is how many of them are buying. Now, if you build a store that is not trustworthy, that is not optimized for conversions, you might get in a situation where you have a 1% or even lower conversion rate from qualified traffic. Let's just say for simple math that it was 1%, and let's say your average order value was $1,000. Okay, well, your 100 visitors are coming, one of them is buying on average, you are doing $1,000 a day in sales, and with your 30% profit margin, you are making $300, I'll put NP for net profit, every single day. And a lot of people will think, oh, that's, that's great. You know, I'm happy with that. Well, let's look at what happens when you build a store, like I'll show you how to build, and like my team can even build for you. You can learn more about that at dropshipwebinar.com. And let's say instead of that 1%, now because you did things the right way, you have a 2.5% conversion rate, which is our goal. That is what we want at a minimum from qualified traffic. What that means is, again, if you had 100 website visitors in a day, you would get, on average, two and a half orders a day. If your average order value was $1,000, that would mean you would get $2,500 in revenue, again, on average, and that would be, what, 300, uh, 600, 750 in net profit in a day with the same store, with the same traffic, simply by having your store optimized to convert. So you would literally, if you did this the wrong way, like I've seen, again, countless times, more times than honestly I care to share with everybody, you would be making $450 less every single day in net profit. Again, simply by not focusing on what you should focus on to get people to buy from you. So next thing we want to talk about now that we have products and suppliers and our store figured out is traffic. And this is a big one and where, again, people get themselves in trouble and they think, oh, drop shipping doesn't work. Well, probably doing the wrong thing, right? Because there are ways to get traffic profitably. And of course, like anything else, there's ways that you can get traffic at a loss. So let's just put Shopify here and let's say you built your Shopify store, right? And let's say, again, it has great products and it has great suppliers. And let's say it has... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's optimized, right? You did everything right up to this point. But then it comes time to get people to find you and you go on YouTube and you look for how to get traffic to my Shopify store in 2024 and you find videos from all these people talking about, oh, Facebook ads, Facebook ads, Facebook ads. And you're like, yeah, Facebook ads. I saw a screenshot of some guy that made all this money. So you go and you make a Facebook ad account and you create a Facebook campaign. And let's say on your Shopify store, you're selling home bars, right? You identify that as a great product, you find great suppliers. So you go, okay, well, you know, I know people talk about on Facebook, we should do interest targeting. Let me go on Facebook and oh, cool, I could find the interest of people who are beer lovers. Perfect. If they're beer lovers, they're probably going to want to buy my home bars that I sell. So you set up these campaigns, you set your budgets, you send people to Shopify, and what happens? Nobody buys, especially if you're doing what we do, which is high ticket drop shipping. Because people that are maybe interested somewhat in what you have to sell, these people are not ready to buy. So do not get this type of traffic if you wanna drop ship profitably. Because all you're gonna be doing is giving Zuckerberg money and wondering why your store doesn't convert. Again, this is assuming you did everything up to this point correct. So how should you get traffic then? Well, again, what I do and what I would encourage you to do is use a few different sources as a starting point. So the first source is going to be Google product listings. And many people don't know this, but Google product listings are free. They cost you a grand total of zero dollars. So if you wanna just see what these look like for yourself, you could just go to google.com and search, search for home bars, do that. Then click on shopping. 
Then on the top of that shopping tab, you're gonna see a carousel of products, and above them, it's gonna say sponsored. Now those are Google Shopping ads, which are amazing, but every single product under that is an organic Google product listing, where you can be for free. And the people that see these and the people that click these are going to be qualified because they're going to be searching for what it is you sell. And before they click your link, they're going to see an image of the product, the product price, your store name. Again, this is qualified traffic. So what else should you do to get people that actually want to buy to find you? Well, you should set up those Google shopping ads. Where do those appear? Like I just mentioned, they appear above the Google product listings, so a better placement. And they also appear on the first page of search results when people search for something simply on google.com without even clicking into Google Shopping, another very qualified source of traffic from people that are much more likely to buy. Now, with all that being said, not everybody that finds your store is going to buy, right? You're going to have a lot of people that leave without placing an order. And what we wanna do with them is send them back to what they were looking at on our store because we know they found us through a quality traffic source to begin with, but they just weren't ready yet. So let's get them back now and get them to buy. And we do this two different ways. We do this, this is where Facebook actually does come in and I'm willing to give Zuck some money with dynamic product ads on Meta. So if you were to go to one of my stores and be on a product page, let's say, you know, a, a mahogany home bar, then you went on Facebook or Instagram five minutes later, you would see an ad for that product. And when you clicked it, it would take you back to that product page on the store because it's a dynamic ad. Now we also run these on Google and these get p basically uh, placed everywhere that Google AdSense is. If you don't know what that means yet, just know that basically 90% of the sites out there that are monetized through ads are using Google to monetize. And by creating remarketing ads, we can have, again, that same mahogany home bar show up on CNN.com when someone's there later that evening and send them back to our product page so that then, again, they can become customers. Now, one more thing I'll just briefly hit on here is in terms of like, you know, what does the, the budget split look like? Again, this is free, so it's absolutely zero. For Google Shopping ads, whatever you decide your budget to be, we take 90% when first starting out, so 90% of that budget, put it into shopping ads, and then we take 10% of whatever we determine to be that budget and put it split between Google and Meta for dynamic remarketing. Because this is what's gonna help to fill the funnel, if you will, to send the quality traffic, and this is what's gonna bring that quality traffic back, so a 90-10 split. So guys, hopefully that was clear. Yes, dropshipping still is profitable. Again, if you want a free training from me about two hours long that goes much deeper into all of this plus a whole lot more, go to dropshipwebinar.com. Link will be in the video description. Watch that free training, ask questions while you're there. I'm more than happy to help you. And I wish you nothing but success in 2024. Now, if you got value, please do leave that like, click subscribe and share this if you know anybody that would also benefit. All right, thanks everybody.